Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we are returning to Twilight Struggle, one of the best board games of all times in its digital adaptations. And this time around, we are going to play the United States. Now, the United States is considered the more difficult side in Twilight Struggle, and that is mostly uh, because you're much more reactive. So you have to play a different strategy, and we're going to talk about that and how the game works, actually. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to explain just very briefly uh, the way that the game is set up. So um, if you aren't out, do look at my older videos on this, uh, but we're just going to briefly go into this. This is a game of the Cold War. We're playing as the United States against the USSR. Um, we are vying for the control of various countries in the world that are all marked by these little icons down here. In each country you have a left side that is the influence by the United States and a right side that is the influence by the Soviets. If the difference in control or in the difference in influence exceeds the stability of the country up here, you do control that country. So for example, Eastern Germany uh, does have four influence by the, uh, by the Soviets, so, and the stability is three, so they do control that. United Kingdom, stability five, we have five influence, so we control that. Canada, we only have two influence, it's four stability, so we do not control that. Basically, that is the goal of the game. You want to control as many countries as possible. There are two types of countries, battleground states, which have a red uh, box, and normal states, which have sort of a black or blue. I don't, I don't quite know that color, but yeah, uh, that, that sort of different color uh, are just normal states. Every now and then, we will be playing scoring cards like this one. You can also see that if you click on the region up here. So in each region, there's a scoring card. Initially, there's only Europe, Middle East and Asia. But over time, Central America, South America, Africa, Southeast Asia, Asia are going to come into play. And the way that that works is if you are present, you do get a certain number of points. If you are dominating, more on that later, if you are controlling, you get a number of points. And for battlegrounds, you typically gain a point. It's slightly different from each region to each other. But yeah. Whenever you score points, uh, there is a sliding marker, so whenever these uh, Soviets do score some points, it moves in their direction. If we are scoring points, it's moving more into our direction. If at any point we are exceeding 20 points, uh, we are winning the game. If the Soviets are getting 20 points, we will be losing the game. There's one important distinction and another way to win or lose the game, and that is the DEFCON markup here. So, remember... We can place influence in several countries and there are various ways to do that. One important way to place influence, and you're going to see that later on, is to play a coup. If you play a coup, DEFCON, so the defensive condition, I think is what it means, will degrade. If it goes to one, there's an atomic war and you lose the game. So you want to prevent that DEFCON is reaching one uh, during your turn. So whenever there is a coup in a battleground state, so in one of the important red ones, the DEFCON will decrease. And the way that works is it's typically increased at the beginning of each turn and then you can play. Now there are a couple of turns, there are overall 10 turns, each with a couple of action phases, so between 6 and 8 action phases per turn. You can see the first 3 turns are early war, mid war, late war and so on. And the Soviets act first. So typically what happens is DEFCON will degrade down to 2, then no one is going to play any coup because it would degrade DEFCON to 1 and therefore you'd lose the game so you typically stop at 2 then the new turn comes around it gets increased to 3 then the Soviets can do a coup and the American player is sort of in a defensive role due to that so that's pretty bad on the other hand we are playing cards so um, initially I think most of the cards are slightly favorable to the Soviets but later on in late war the Americans do gain a bit of an advantage so we want to stay afloat basically here and uh, try to win now we can place a couple of influence just for the setup phase uh, we're gonna go and get West Germany over here we're gonna get Italy as well and that does leave us with one influence now there is one specific card for France that would reduce American influence. So that is something that we should keep in mind. Um, I think for now we can go ahead and slightly reinforce West Germany over here. That is called overprotecting because once you have control of a country it gets harder for the other side to actually place anything in there. We're going to confirm that and we're going to get into the first turn over here. Each turn has a headline phase where, what, where each player is selecting one card to play as an event. So each of these cards has an event text 
and then later on we can be a little bit more flexible in what we're doing. Now for the event you generally have cards that are favorable to one specific side, for example these white cards uh, are just all favorable for our side, whereas the red cards are typically favorable to the Soviets. So for example Nasser here would add USSR influence in Egypt not necessarily something that we would want. So basically, we can focus, especially for the headline phase here, uh, on these white cards. So either we could place special relationship, that would mean if the UK is US controlled, which it currently is, but NATO is not in effect, which it isn't, US will add one influence to any country adjacent to the UK. So for example, we could place um, some influence into France, we could place some influence into Canada, um, all of these would have some advantages, so we could think about playing that, it wouldn't be too bad. We could also play 5 year plan, USSR player must randomly discard one card. If the card is a US associated event, the event occurs immediately. If the card is a USSR event, um, then the card must be disregarded. So that's also interesting. And lastly, we've got the Formosan resolution, Taiwan shall be treated as a battleground country for scoring purposes. So Taiwan down here. Uh, would basically count as a red country in Asia. So yeah, we don't really need to do that. We should briefly think about our strategy here. We've got a lot of um, red cards, uh, so basically cards that are not very favorable towards us. So we need to be careful about which ones of these we will be playing. And we do have the Middle East scoring card. That is a card that we must be played um, in, that must be played in this turn. It may not be held. If we were to hold this, uh, we'd be losing the game, so not necessarily something that we want. So Middle East should be something where we do spend quite some um, effort to, to try and tackle the Middle East and maybe gain an advantage there. That being said, it could also be that the other side has either the Europe scoring card or the Asia scoring card, so, so we must not completely disregard these either. Now I think we're going to play this special relationship over here simply because it will grant us one additional influence, which is not the best. Ooh, they have... Vietnam revolts. That's not great. We can place one influence. Now it might be natural to do that in France, but I'm actually going to go for Canada. The reason for that is I know there's one specific card called NORAD that is simulating the US-Canadian alliance uh, against nuclear weapons and that is um, that basically grants a very good advantage. So I would like to control it. It's only active when Canada is controlled by us, so I would actually like to control Canada and that might be nice. So, Soviet player is going to go first. He's uh, looking at his cards right now. I'm going to play one very soon. There we go. And he's going to play that for influence, which is interesting. And he has four influence markers there. So what he has done is he's placed two influence in Thailand because he has some influence adjacent in Vietnam due to the headline event that he has, which is interesting because that might indicate that he wants to score, that he might have the Asia scoring card and that he wants to gain a control over the situation here in Asia. So we might have to counter that. We also need to keep in mind he has the China card, which is a very uh, important uh, card over there. Also, he has used his other two points to break our control in Italy. So a single card over here did mean that he could uh, place more influence into Italy and that basically that way he broke our control there which is obviously not a very good thing for us. Now, we can do a couple of things here, and I'm mostly thinking that we should try to place a lot of influence early on. Now, we can place influence in various ways, and we can place influence by using some of these cards, but it would add his um, event, and that might not be the best, literally. This is also a very interesting event. Warsaw Pact formed. Remove all US influence from four countries in Eastern Europe or add five uses. It would basically cement his position in in Europe. But I'm afraid there's not that, mu that much that we can do. So we need to play six cards. Um, we do have seven, so at most there's a single card that we cannot play. And I'm thinking that might actually be Nasa over here. Okay, let's start out by placing some influence. I'm going to play one in Italy over here. So that does give us some points over there. And then I'm thinking that we should potentially place some influence down here in Pakistan. And the reason for that is that it would give us some influence and it might um, avoid him getting into India from this side. So we must make some progress over here. 
The disadvantage is that he might try to coup Pakistan. Pakistan is very low stability. On the other hand, otherwise he might just try to influence Iran as well. So we need to be a little bit careful over here how this is going to play out. I think he's going to coup one country, but we might as well try um, to keep the other one. And if he's going to coup Pakistan now, at least we have Iran for the same time. Yeah, he's going to play a coup and I think it's going to be on Pakistan. Yeah, it is. And he's super successful in that. He's rolling a six, which is the best result for him. Defcon goes down by, by one level there. And we have a little bit of a problem here. So, now the good thing about that is due to the DEFCON restrictions, because DEFCON is now at four, there can be no coup attempts in Europe. So Europe is relatively safe for now, but we can still play coups in Asia. And here is the issue. He is controlling three battleground states um, in Asia. We aren't controlling any. We are controlling just one non-battleground. So we need to be quite careful about what's going on here in Asia. And I'm thinking that we should try to do a coup as well. And I'm thinking we are going to play... Okay, let's play Comic-Con. We're going to resolve the event first. So he is going to play um, quite a couple of influence cards in Europe, which is not the worst. Europe is fairly stable for now. We are controlling Italy and Germany. He is controlling East Germany and Poland. France is still a question but not a bad one and he's p positioning just a couple of points there in Eastern Europe so that's okay so let's make a coup attempt here now Pakistan would be nice to counter coup that but at five points it's very very unlikely that we would be able to score enough points here what I'm thinking though is we could coup Thailand and we have a decent enough chance to do that and we are failing horribly at that well that is not nice so we have prevented him from having control over Thailand but it is still um, in, he still has some influence here and we don't. So this is not good, this is not good at all. He can still do another coup because he would push that at 2-2. Two, two. But he's placing influence, yeah. One in Thailand, a little bit, wow, my, okay. This is not, this is not going good for us. He has control over large parts of Asia here. And there's really not that much that we can do about this. Specifically, he might be locking in India soon. So we need to be quite careful about what's going on here. And I'm thinking that we could play some influence into Taiwan and then potentially play for Mosin Resolution. Now to break his domination, the way that this works is we have presence because we are controlling country. Here's domination. Domination occurs when you have a battleground, a non-battleground, and you have more countries in total than the other side. So what we could try to do is gain a lot of countries here and try to break his domination. Specifically, if we have more battlegrounds than, than he has, I think that would be good as well. Now, he has already three battlegrounds, Pakistan, Thailand and North Korea. We don't have any, but we do have some presence in South Korea and Japan. Now, there is a car, card called the Korean War. And that might not be, and, and that basically is a card for the Soviet side, obviously. It would indicate um, the war between North Korea and South Korea and it would allow him pot to potentially take over South Korea unless we control a couple of adjacent countries. One of these adjacent countries is Japan. There's another card in the game uh, which basically gives us control over the entirety of Japan so we don't need to necessarily do that manually. We don't have that card right now but if he has it he might trigger that. On the other hand, Taiwan is also adjacent to South Korea and if we are controlling Taiwan, we might be able to protect South Korea a little bit better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to resolve the event here for Warsaw Pact. It's an enemy event, so it's going to occur to him. And we're going to place influence into Taiwan and then we might uh, play for Mosin Resolution so that we that Taiwan does control as a, uh, counts as a battleground as well, if it makes any difference. So he's going to place more items into into Europe there, which is pretty bad for us, but we can place some influence here. Let's place one influence into Iran, so that we are controlling at least one battleground state here in the Middle East. We're going to place another one into Lebanon, so that we are actually dominating over here. We do control one of each non-battleground and one battleground. Uh, we have more countries than he has so we would now score quite a couple of points in the Middle East so 
It's a bit of a defensive move, uh, but I do think it is worthwhile. And then we have one more point that we could basically spend anywhere. And I think we might go with Taiwan down here. Okay, let's go for Taiwan. Maybe we can accumulate enough points to break his control over here. Although I'm very, very worried about Asia. He has a lot of control over here. And we're just barely holding on. We're not even holding on. We're just barely building up our position here. So this is not going to get great. And that is quite typical of playing the United States. Yeah, and he has Asia scoring. Jesus, he's getting seven points here. And that is not great. Now, on the other hand, we are pretty doing pretty well in the Middle East. So we might as well play the Middle East and scoring card now. It's going to deduct three points of his. So that's all right. But not great. On the other hand, the pressure of Asia has just been taken off slightly, so we don't need to be too concerned about that immediately. We do need to be quite concerned about Europe though. Well, Europe is relatively stable. He has a lot of nations there. Ooh. He's playing containment, which does give us more influence for the next couple of turns over here, which is nice because he has just tried to break control of Italy and we need to place some influence over there just to regain that. Let's resolve the event here first, destalinization. It does allow him to shuffle a lot of influence points, and that's pretty bad because it allows him to break into, into all of these countries down here. But it does mean he will need to remove some influence. He's probably going to do that from Pakistan. I would, if I was him. No, he's just drawing them away from sort of everywhere. He has control over Australia, which is interesting. Okay. And let's play that for influence. We do get three influence for the card, but I think it should add one due to the fact that we are um, up on here uh, on, on containment. And indeed, yeah, it just takes a second here to, to re-register that. Okay, so we have control over Italy. We can place three more influence. We could try to regain some sort of control over Asia, but for now I don't think we necessarily need to do that. We are relatively, I mean, it has been scored, the scoring card has been played, so we don't need to be too concerned about that at this very moment. We could also try to play into France, which would give us control over three battleground states, whereas he only has two, but we still wouldn't have more countries than he has because he has all these non-aligned countries, but still I think it might be worthwhile just to try to to make some progress over here. Well, the alternative is... Well, we have three influence. We could try to break into Africa. No, I think this is fine. Let's, let's, let's try to gain some advantage here into Europe. He's space racing something, interesting. So let's talk about this space race. If you have a card that you really, really don't want to play because it would trigger the enemy event, like NASA for example, you could try to put it into space race. Uh, it would need two operation value and on a roll to, of one to three, you'd be gaining a po a two point, two victory points for the first one to achieve that, one victory point for the second one to achieve that. Next time around, you would get Earth satellites and that would give you some advantages over there as well. So that might be okay. Now, how is Europe looking? We are controlling four countries, he's controlling six. If we could tr break a couple of countries, um, or actually gain control of a couple of countries, that might be mighty nice. Especially Canada, for example, would be lovely here. Now, we've only one more card to play. And I'm thinking what we might want to do is keep Formosan Resolution for next turn, so that we have at least one good event for our side. And NASA, we could actually space him right now. Yeah, you know what, let's do that. Yeah, and we are successful here, so we are gaining two victory points, uh, which is nice because it does reduce his lead a little bit. All of the current events are gonna go away, and we are gonna go into the second turn over here, so DEFCON is gonna improve by one level to four. We're gonna get new cards here. And these are looking slightly better. There are more countries, uh, more cards here, that are favorable towards us, especially for example NORAD, which is again very useful because it would give us uh, the ability to control a couple of things. CAA created is also kind of nice. The other side would have to reveal their cards. Capture Nazi Scientist is okay. US Japanese Mutual Defense Pact would give us immediate control over Japan. 
Um, but honestly, it's usually not a good card for the US to play, because to gain control over Japan, we currently would need to th place three influence there. Now this is a four value card, so just playing that for the event isn't necessarily a good one. Um, and the coups and realignment roles in Japan aren't, aren't that useful either. So it's typically quite useful to play this for the points and then wait for it to show up on the other side um, and basically wait for that. Gain some victory points, honestly, I don't think is that useful for us. So I'm mm, kind of torn between Norad over here, which is lovely indeed, but because it's a good long-term benefit. Uh, but honestly, I'm thinking actually more CIA created is useful because, well, firstly, we would see his card. Um, and secondly, we could play one operation value here. And that is nice as well. So what is happening here? So firstly, he is playing who lost China. If the USSR holds the China card, reset military operations to zero. He doesn't, so this is not a good play for him. Uh, it might be because he doesn't have any other good cards, but I actually do not know. So what cards does he have? He's got an interesting choice over here. So he has got De Gaulle leads France. This is quite um, bad for us because it is a good card for him. He could remove two US UN influence in France and add one USSR influence. So that would put us on par in France. We would need to be careful about him not gaining control over um, France because of this socialist person over here. We've got a Romanian abdication. He has the ability to place Romania under his control immediately. He's also got socialist governments. Remove US influence in Western Europe by a total of three influence points, removing no more than two by country. So that also um, would be would be kind of scary. He could run a big attack on Europe here. He's also got First Lightning, which is a kind of funny one. Because it would reduce DEFCON. So he needs to be extremely careful by playing this card if he can. How many cards do we play? We're playing six cards after the headline event. So he can ignore one of these cards. But he also has UN Intervention, which allows him to play, for example, Eastern European Unrest, which would um, allow us to remove quite a couple of things. Um, but basically he can ignore this text. Um, so basically we don't need to be too concerned about that. He can place all of these cards basically, but one of them is going to reduce DEFCON. So if we can push down DEFCON to level two, he might be um, quite careful about playing this card here at least. Everything else here is aimed against Europe. Olympic Committee Games is, is not that uh, dramatically diff uh, important. Right, so this is this is pretty bad for us. On the other hand, we do have a couple of decent cards, so I think that's going to be all right. So let's continue over here and see what's going to happen. So we can place um, some influence, or we can conduct a single action over here. And what would that action be? Now, of course, Europe is still kind of tempting, uh, but I think it might be the best if we're doing a coup attempt over here so that we are locking him down a little bit more than, than currently is the case. So we could do a coup attempt here against Thailand, for example. And we'd have a 50-50 chance of actually doing some damage over here. On the other hand, if we are cooing in Nigeria, we might be a little bit more successful, and indeed we are, so that is lovely to see. We are now controlling Nigeria, and more importantly, DEFCON is degraded by one step, and it, hit, it is his turn now. So he can play that card. He can play First Lightning and thereby reduce DEFCON a further step, but he cannot actually do a coup with it because, or at least not a coup in a battleground state, because that would degrade it by two points. And if he doesn't do that, he's playing this for the event and removing quite a couple of points here in, in Europe. Now, we need to counter that, and I think what we're gonna do is we're going to play U.S. Mutual Defense Pact here. We could play that for the for the influence. Now the thing is, we are still strong in Italy. He can break us here definitively, uh, but I think if we are to do another coup, we might be doing better. But we can't actually, can we? We can. We can actually not do a coup here because he doesn't have any battleground states in any place where we can conduct coups. So Europe can only be cooed at DEFCON 5. 
Asia can only be DEFCON at level four or five. Middle East can be scored, uh, can be, we, we could conduct a coup here, but he doesn't control any, actually he has any influence in any battleground state, so we cannot conduct a coup this time around. Can we do anything else that would reduce DEFCON? This would improve DEFCON. Yeah, we can't actually reduce DEFCON any further. Well, that's a pity. So in, in that case, I think we are best off just placing some influence all, all around. Okay, let's do that by this card. Of course, it's a good card for us. So let's place one in Italy. We could reinforce France, uh, but I don't think we will. Because the thing about France is... He has got the De Gaulle card. And that would reduce our influence by two levels. So if we are re increasing that... Uh, there's not really any point to that, I think. So, yeah, I think we might be better off just doing it this way and not actually improving it. So that does leave the question, what else could we be doing? We could reinforce Panama. We could also think about Cuba because we have the Fidel card. That would remove all US influence in Cuba and the USSR would gain sufficient control for, uh, sufficient influence for control in Cuba. Um, but if we actually got any any presence in Haiti or Nicaragua, that would allow us to dispel their influence in Cuba uh, much more easily. So that might be a good choice over there. It would also allow us to do a little bit more influence over here. So actually, I think one influence in Costa Rica might be nice so that we next turn around, we can play some in Nicaragua as well. Or at least have some ability there to, to re-influence these. Let's play one in Canada as well, just for Norad to be um, potentially in play at least. And that does leave us with one more influence that we can place anywhere, basically. Don't think anywhere over here makes a lot of sense. Could place that anywhere over here. We need to be a little bit careful about not losing Iran. And I think over time it might make sense to reinforce Israel. Israel is a lot is, is a very natural choice here for the US because you're starting out with some influence and it does have a very high stability. So it's fairly safe from any coup attempt uh, over time. So I think that might be useful. Right, let's see what they are going to do over here in the second turn. He's playing the goal for influence, so that is placing more influence into Italy and some into France as well. Now that is interesting, so I think we would do very well in matching that. He doesn't have the U, um, the control card, so it's not that critical, um, but I do think it would be mighty fine if we were to control France. The de Gaulle card is out of play for now, it will be reinserted at some point. Uh, but for now, he doesn't have any control over here, so that's nice. And let's also gra grab Italy here again. And that might be might be a very good choice for us over here. We are still at DEFCON 3, so he has still the ability to play first lightning. But if he get, got any control here in any victory point province, um, we would be able to do a coup. Okay, he's playing US Intervention, and I think he's going to couple that with Eastern... Oh, he's doing a coup attempt here. And he's successful in that. Well, that's not great because it's degrading um, DEFCON to 2. Now, he has, he might have um, a problem here because he has three more cards to play. And I think one of them might be First Lightning. He only has three more cards in hand and one of them is First Lightning. And if he's going to, pl going to play that, um, he would be losing some influence over there. So that's not good for him. On the other hand, he's just gained Panama, which is, isn't necessarily good for us. Well, we can't coup it either, so there is that. So we can just think about how we are going to build up our strategy over here. I think Norod might be a very good card to play around next time around. We don't need to bring it into play now, so we don't really need that. We could play the China card, build out some influence in Asia. Might not be the worst idea. We are still very far behind in Asia. 
It would be nice to get at least Pakistan or India on our side. Okay, so let's play the China card. We're going to place one influence here in Pakistan. That is costing us two points. Uh, but because when you use the China card to only place influence in Asia, you basically get an additional point. So that is nice. And that does give us a little bit more influence than you'd usually have. So I think that's fine. And I think what we want to do here is build up basically our influence all around. So I think a good choice here might be to actually get Taiwan on our side. And let's grab the Philippine, the Philippines. So at this point we are controlling three states. He's controlling still five, but we might make might make a push on India here at some point. That might be lovely. Um, and there are still some areas around that might sort of more or less naturally go to us. You know, wait a minute. So if we are placing influence, we could place two in Taiwan. Could place two in South Korea. That would leave us one more influence. And we wouldn't be able to break into India next time around. But if we got the Philippines... We'd be sitting at four states, including one non-battleground. South Korea would not be that exposed because it is supported by Taiwan. So if he does at any point gain the card there, uh, we'd still be all right. Yeah, so I think that's okay. And we do have some time for Asia because it has again been scored. So uh, it's not going to come up very soon. So I think that's okay. Slightly concerned about Central America now. Yeah, he does need to put that into space. But unfortunately, he's gaining a point for that, so that's unfortunate. He has two more cards. I don't quite remember which they were. I think Olympic Games and something else. Uh, but they were not extremely critical for us, so that's A-OK. -okay. Right, what can we do? US player exposes all scoring cards in their hand. The US may add one influence. So this is not really a bad event for us, so we don't need to be too concerned about playing that. Fidel, on the other hand, is not a great card for us to play um, and we basically can have two cards on our hand now captured Nazi scientist is super useful because it is a low value event um, and just playing that for the event is is typically quite nice because it just allows you to advance over here in a guaranteed fashion emotional resolution is nice it's actually useful for us because it would allow us to score um, Asia now in with an additional battleground state here uh, which would basically break his control, would it? No, not quite. And Norad is he's pretty useful, so I do like to play Norad. Well, for now, I think we can be actually quite reactive over here. I mean, Asia, yes, he has a dominant position. There's no way around it. Middle East, for now we are doing better than he is, but it's on a very low level, so he can flip that around pretty easily, actually. Um, Europe, we're doing better in battleground states, but he has six in total, whereas we only have five. So we would need control of at least one more state to get to a dominant position over here. Which might be nice, it might be something like Spain, Portugal, or the Benelux countries. And there are certain events that would be useful for us in that regard as well. Okay, so let's actually play Resolve Cambridge 5 here. We don't have anything. So um, let's place influence in various countries. We are going to place one in Nicaragua. Simply so that we might have an easier time around Cuba next time around. And that does leave us with one more influence here. Could grab Indonesia. Might be useful. Um, but I think what we can actually do is grab Spain, Portugal over here. And the reason for that is so that we can use um, Europe scoring a little bit more aggressively next time around if we are gaining one more country here. So two more cards to play. I think after that we're going to um, put a cut in this. But let's see what's going to happen in the rest of this um, turn around, uh, the turn as, as we are uh, playing around. Right, Olympic Games for influence. Yeah, and I don't remember his last card. Into Algeria. Well, that's interesting. Now he's matching our influence in Africa, um, which is not necessarily great for us, but it's not the end of the world either. 
So, what do we want to play? Fidel is is kind of nasty. But at some point he's going to come up anyway. And he does already have some influence here. So we might keep him around. Formosan Resolution is a good way for us to counter Asia. Norad is, is super useful to have in play because we may place one influence to any country already containing influence uh, by us. And that is happening all the time when this is moving to two. So I very much like this event actually. On the other hand, it's a three point card um, and it might also turn up as his event. Could just go for the space race. You know what? We're going to send Fidel to space. We are failing, so that is unfortunate. That should leave him at one card. The remaining application, so he's going to get another country there. Yes, indeed, that was his, his card. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I'm guessing that's just the way it is. So what are we going to play? We could play for Muslim Resolution. That would sort of settle Asia in a little bit more. We could play um, go for space race here or we could just aggressively expand into some influence somewhere around. Now I don't think we necessarily need the battleground state here. It doesn't dramatically it, it doesn't shift the situation in Asia by, by enough, I feel. He currently has five states, we have four, so we could actually just grab Indonesia or Malaysia and we'd be just as fine. So I don't think we actually need this. So we could instead place the influence here. And that wouldn't be the worst idea. So yeah, let's actually do that. Let's use you for influence instead. Um, let's grab Indonesia. So that already cancels out this effect to a large extent. Um, and then let's add Spain, Portugal. At that point, he is controlling seven states versus our six. Uh, but I think it does give us something. You know what? Let's actually do that slightly differently. Um, let's place one point into Indonesia. And the other point we are going to play into the Saharan states. Now, this is not a very stable situation. But when you have two countries adjacent to each other, uh, they do have some some um, they offer some level of protection for each other so that is nice Defcon is improving we are gonna get a lot of points over here including Europe scoring and a couple of really really good cards for our side so we've got independent Reds that would add sufficient influence into some country here to basically break his control at which point uh, we'd be not be looking at a 5 to 7 we'd be looking at a 5 to 6 and we might actually get another one so that would be pretty good NATO is of course very lovely but most importantly it uh, has a huge point value for us and Marshall Plan is also very nice because it would allow us to place a lot of influence basically throughout Western Europe and that would basically allow us to at least get one point into here Truman Doctrine, remove all USSR influence markets in one uncontrolled country in Europe. Now there are not that many uncontrolled countries in Europe at all. Basically only Hungary is uncontrolled and Spain, Portugal. So honestly that is not that valuable a card. De facto is also quite nice because if we are playing this in headline it cancels out one USSR headline event. So yeah, I think that would be nice. That being said, we are playing here for 40 minutes and I think it is a good place to put in a cut. So let me know what you think. It's quite typical that the US to, uh, USSR takes an early uh, lead over here. We are doing fairly well, uh, I think, in the Middle East. We are not doing so hot in Asia and in Europe, he's actually controlling a large amount of countries here. So that is a little bit um, disconcerting for us. On the other hand, Africa, it's looking okay. Central America, not doing that great for us. So we really need to pick up the pace over here. But this time around, we are a little bit more lucky with the cards that we've got. So, hope you enjoyed and hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye.